who was born in Guanajuato. This, these are his So I'd like to begin by giving you a little bit of his parents. And he was a twin. I think they're one of the... And the relationship with twins is intimate. Last week I was discussing this theme with a psychologist to try to understand uh, Diego's mentality. And he was telling me that twins are so close that some of them develop their own language. And he was telling me about this case of a twin twins that spoke this language that was so intense that they could not communicate with anybody else. And they had to deprogram them and take them out of their twin language. I'm very proud of this. I think it's the earliest young portrait of Diego Rivera. He wins a, a scholarship to, to study in, in Spain. And here, in addition to the teachings of the, the, the person that was guiding the workshop called Eduardo Chicharro, he has the museums. And so he becomes this kind of absolutely academic artist. We can, we can see these works that he does when he's in his 20s that, that show or, or reveal him as this man that has a, a total control of his craft. And that, that sometimes has such a, is, is so able to identify with the paintings that he sees that his, his he briefly comes back to Mexico in 1910, when there is the centennial. And later, Diego would invent all these tales of how he had fought side by side with Zapata, and all these other things. <laughs> They're not true. <laughs> Every time that Diego was presented with a choice with politics or anything other, and art, he always chose art. He Lok, which he paints here, a Russian artist. This, this is a, a painting he does in Belgium. And he eventually moves to Paris, where he starts transforming his art from a very academic, realistic art. He starts simplifying the, the landscape, uh, influenced by the futurists, the, the Italian uh, artists that were obsessed with movies. But I have always believed in Picasso. <laughs> and with Picasso, he starts to transform this very realistic, conventional, traditional way of painting into Cubism. And he becomes one of the best in Cubism. Largely because he has such a control in drawing. The problem I have with a lot of contemporary artists nowadays is that they can't draw. They're terribly boring. Because they, they don't have a craft. This is a cubist portrait. Look at the, at the close-up. In other words, the man knows his subject, knows the face of the person he's painting, can do it upside down, from the side, from below. So he has a total control of, of, of what, what he's doing. And uh, and then Rivera 
through the admiration he has of, of Hassan, he discovers a new way of painting that goes beyond what he had worked as a cubist. So these are some of the some of them are extraordinary, like this one, and especially the mathematician. Now you would look at this and you would think, well, that's a fairly realistic, conventional portrait. But when you look at the drawings that prepare you for that, you see this rigorous geometric construction that would have been impossible without his cubist views. And uh, when Frida's birth is also traumatic, she was born a year after her only brother died. And so the father looks at her like, like the boy that he, she, he had lost. In many ways, educates her as a tomboy. The mother is always emotionally unavailable. Because first, she's still grieving the son. And then she has a daughter a year after. And, and the nanny, uh, the, the, the woman who breastfeeds Frida, is an Indian nanny, not the mother. So Frida has also that loneliness at the beginning. Both Diego and Frida, Diego by the death of his twin brother, Frida by being born after the death of her brother and her sister. Now, Frida has something else, which is sickness. When, when she's, you know, she has a mother that is uh, also a tragic figure. The, the mother also had had a German boyfriend before Frida's father. And this man had committed suicide in front of Frida's mother. She had actually seen him kill himself. And she had somehow sublimated this with this kind of obsessive, uh, Catholicism. So Frida is raised in this intensely Catholic world. And then sickness. When she's six or seven, she's got polio. She would describe how uh, the loneliness of being sick forces her to invent uh, an imaginary friend. So later when you look at her work, she does these frequent double images of herself with another friend. And then the closest with the father, the, the father, Frida is really trained as a photographer, not as a painter. That is important to re remember. The father teaches her to take photos, teaches her to touch photos, then teaches her how to use a microscope. If you look at a lot of Frida's paintings, they are really magnified images. A lot of this uh, people have interpreted as magical surrealism. Her family uh, receives wounded zapatistas and helps them. And then Frida goes to a high school where they first meet. It's the, the birth of muralism. This, the school where Frida attends is the first place where murals are painted in Mexico. And Frida looks at Diego Rivera do this mural. And it is said that when she was doing this mural, and she still is 13, 14 years old, she confronts Diego's ferocious second wife, Lupe Marina, and stares her down. 